Hi and welcome, Sean from Drone Zone on the podcast. I'm here with Jim today from D1 Store. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. So obviously got a very small drone in front of us, the uh, DJI Agris T40. And you probably can tell, given we're standing right next to it, what's, how big this is. So Jim, give us a little bit of an overview for, for the viewers and listeners. Sure. Um, so the T40 is DJI's newest agriculture drone. Uh, it can carry about 40 liters of chemical, or you can change the tank out and put about 50 kilograms of a dry substance like granular fertilizer, mouse bait. Um, it can fly for about 10 minutes. Um, it's really just long enough to dispense the tank, uh, of the contents of the tank. Um, so it's good for applications in Broadacre, uh, as well as like spot spraying weeds. Um, you can manually fly it, look the camera straight down, um, hit the trigger, spray the weeds, stop it, fly to the next patch of blackberries or next patch of weeds that you have out there. Yep. Um, so it has a lot of uses and uh, a lot of applications in agriculture. So it's previous um, model, the T30. Mm -hmm. What are some of the features that the T40 has above the T30 that someone would probably need to look at. Yeah, totally. So the T30 had um, six arms on it, and so it was a little bit more to unfold when you pull it out. Yeah. It also had um, 16 nozzles on it, uh, so okay. there was a lot more to clean every time after each mission. Yeah. Uh, the T40 actually has only two nozzles. Uh, these nozzles are pressure nozzles. So we need, or, where, where about sorry. these nozzles these for the guys? right back here, these okay. two. Yep. Uh, and I'm sorry, they're not pressured, they're centrifugal nozzles. The T30's nozzles were 16 pressure nozzles. Uh, so that's how it atomized the solution and created a spray. Yeah. These actually uh, spin two discs, and as those discs spin, it'll atomize the solution and okay. then create that spray for you. Yeah. So it's a lot less to clean. Um, and you can, uh, a lot of people have been talking about the droplet sizes between the T30 and the T40. Um, the T40 actually comes with a second disc in the controller box. So all you have to do is switch out the dual discs and add in the second disc yeah. and you can get a lot larger droplet size. So most chemicals call for a droplet size usually above 300 microns. Yeah. Uh, helps avoid um, that chemical moving over to another piece of land where it wasn't intended to be. Right. Uh, so you can still achieve up to a 400 micron size with these nozzles. And much less cleaning. A lot less cleaning, yep. A lot less using a toothbrush to make sure that there's no buildup on any of the nozzles and uh, just running some water through these and some solution to clean them out. So if we can take a step back a little bit about, obviously quite a large drone, obviously mm -hmm. need two people to handle it. What are we talking about from a, a weight perspective? Uh, so at uh, max takeoff weight with 40 liters of chemical in there, we're looking at about 120 kilograms. 120 um, kilos, okay. Yep. So it's pretty heavy. The, the drone itself isn't that bad when the battery's not in. Uh, one person can move it. Yep. Uh, once you put the battery in, it's a little bit heavy for one person. Once you fill it up, it's definitely too heavy to move around. So what do you recommend from a battery perspective for an operator? Mm -hmm. um, how many batteries should they be looking at when they're purchasing a T40? Yeah, if you're doing continuous flying, I would fly with three or four batteries. Yep. Um, each time the battery is charged, it adds heat to the battery, and each time it's discharged or flown, it adds heat to the battery. Yeah. So you want to have enough batteries to cycle through so that you don't overheat one battery. Okay. Its max operating temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. So when you do um, charge them, you wanna do that in the shade. And there's also a cooling station that comes with this that we've uh, adapted the T30 charger. So the yeah. T40 charging station is not available in Australia. Okay. So we have to use the T30 charging station. Uh, so we have a lead that can connect into that T40 cooling station, yeah. which has a set of fans to blow air through um, these aluminum conductors right here. Yeah to cool the battery down. Right. So I really haven't had too many people uh, with any battery overheating issues. Um, most time you're spraying a chemical, you are not often operating in hot temperatures anyway. So yeah. most chemicals are sprayed around 25 degrees Celsius. 
Um, so usually you aren't out on hot days and if you keep your battery charging station and batteries out of the sun, you should be pretty good operating with three or four batteries. And so you said max time is around 10 minutes? Yeah, one battery and one flight time. Okay. Um, you, it depends on how fast you're emptying the chemical in the tank. If you're at an application rate of like 20 liters a hectare, it's, uh, that, the drone's going to have to carry that payload a lot farther. If you're spraying at around like 80 liters a hectare, then that drone is going to dispense that liquid much more quickly. Yep. And so you might get two flights off of one battery, but if the drone has to carry that payload, then it's going to burn down that battery okay. and you might get one tank out. So um, I'm obviously interested in buying a T40. Mm -hmm. What are some of the accessories that someone needs to consider before they go in looking into purchasing. Gotcha. Um, so definitely you would want to have some extra controller batteries. Yep. Um, so you're talking about, I think they're WB37s, yes, were they? Yes, sir. Yep. yep. I'll let you uh, they it. would go, they just plug in right here. Yep. Uh, they're pretty common for DJI controllers, the M300 controller the same as the operates, RC Pro the RC Pro, yep. yep. Cool. And uh, they also power the DRTK2 base station. Yep. Um, if you are flying with the DRTK2 base station, you know, you can probably have, you know, six or eight batteries, WB37s charged for yep. the day. And uh, the controller doesn't come with the drone, I believe. It does, yeah. Oh, it does come? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so in the box with the drone comes the controller, the extra set of discs that I was talking about, yep. uh, and then the air-cooled charging station. That all comes in one box. Okay. And then three batteries are separate boxes, and then the T30 charging station is a separate box as well. Okay. And then we've got the DRTK for a base station. Yep. Can you use an N-Trip server if you... <sighs> you... I wouldn't suggest well, can, it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're using a DRTK base. I would I would stick with the DRTK2 base station. Using an in-trip server, um, a lot of the times they don't feed the data in the same projection that the drone's operating in. You have to go in and uh, correct for that, uh, especially when you're doing mapping missions. So. Uh, to make the workflow much more seamless, I would just have a DRTK2 base station. They're all talking in WGS 1984 as yeah. the projection or the datum. Um, so it just makes your life a whole much lot easier. Simpler. Yeah, fair yeah. enough, understood. So got uh, three batteries, the controller, the drone, we've got DRTK base, mm -hmm. and we're pretty much ready to get started. Yep, uh, I'd also say, so. The, another difference between the T30 and this one is this one comes with a mapping function. So okay. you can actually uh, map up to 13 hectares at a time in the field, uh, process the data on the controller, cool. and then use that to build in your obstacles and have an RTK corrected map to fly the drone on top of. Right. Um, there are some limitations. It, it can only do up to 13 hectares. It only flies at 30 meters off the ground uh, and it does initiate the terrain follow feature. So with the terrain follow, is that done in the, pre, uh, in the mapping pre-planning? So the terrain follow feature uh, works through the radar. So you actually just set out the flight lines and the radar will gauge the distance from the ground. And okay. so it does that in real time. So radar as in What's yes, over here? this radar right here. Okay. This is, uh, and then there's a, a forward radar and another backward radar that's right back here. Okay, we can yeah. get that later. Awesome. So that's probably one of the key additions that the T40 has. That's probably quite useful for the operator. It right? is good in the field when uh, you don't have a mapping drone with you. You want to go out, survey the site, uh, make sure that you have your obstacles built in. Um, I always recommend that the safest way to fly the drone is to first uh, use a smaller mapping drone or the T40 and create your RTK map, uh, build in the obstacles to that map, and then plan your flight path around those obstacles. Yep. Um, it just reduces the chance or the likelihood that the drone is going to maybe hit something or crash. Yeah. Uh, so it's a much safer way to operate the drone. So if you use a smaller drone, I mm -hmm. presume like a Mavic 3 Enterprise or a... Um, I guess a multi-spectral. Yep. What do you actually, can you bring that map across? Is it a KML that you bring in across to, to this controller? Or? Yeah, so if you used, um, and I highly suggest using a Mavic 3 Enterprise or a Mavic 3 multi-spectral, um, they fly for 
35 to 40 minutes. Yeah. Um, you can cover a lot of ground there. Uh, and then you would process those images in DJI Terra on okay. a laptop. Then once that's processed, you would either save it on an SD card and then bring that SD card into the controller, yeah. or you can upload it to the cloud and then pull it down on the controller awesome. if, you're, if this is connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, there's a 4G dongle that you can insert yeah. into this too. So obviously if someone, you got a lot of knowledge here that you can actually impart on, on someone starting out new. Mm -hmm. So the, obviously a good place to start would be contact you at enterprise at d1store.com.au. Yep, that would be and, great. Um, I'm sure Jim's more than happy to impart lots of knowledge. Of course. Um, just to wrap up, can we just do a quick walkthrough of some of the key parts sure, of the drone, Jim? Yeah. Um, so here, the, the drone comes with, it's uh, got four motors. Yep. Uh, so there's four different types of propellers. There's upper and lower, and then there's counterclockwise propellers and clockwise propellers. Okay. So when you do a propeller switch, you just have to make sure that you're matching the right propeller to the right motor. Uh, it's not that bad. The top ones are dark, the bottom ones have a stripe, and then they have an engraving right here that tell you if they're upper or lower, counterclockwise or Thank clockwise. Uh, on the front here, yep, we have the radar, the fog lights. So you can have these lights set to uh, auto, on or off. Um, so you can operate this at night, which yeah. sometimes it's a little bit more calm at night with less wind. Um, so it might be better, a better lower. time of day to, yeah. to do an application. Um, the FPV camera right here and the binocular vision sensors up front. So it does have uh, obstacle avoiding sensors uh, visual as well as the radars. Yeah. Um, so it, I've seen it back up to a power line, it go 20 kilometers an hour and right at five meters away from the power line, back right up to it and hover there. Um, so it will see it. Um, but yeah, you just want to be careful for, for trees and things in the field too. Um, I've seen it go around and it, it kind of chooses when it comes up to an obstacle, it'll choose the path of least resistance. So sometimes it goes straight over, sometimes it goes horizontally around, sometimes it kind of does this arc that goes around it. Um, but I think still the safest way to fly it is to just automatically have the drone know where that obstacle is and then fly around, around it, it. Yeah. and have its flight path built around it. Awesome. Um, well, with the forearm, so the spray tank here, the pumps are down at the bottom, which draw in a liquid through this tube, send it through the back arms and down to the spray nozzles. Yep. Uh, these are the ESC controllers here to control the power that goes to the motors. Um, and these are things that you guys can help um, as far as maintenance is concerned yeah, as well, definitely. right? Definitely, yeah, we carry these parts. Uh, and then these are the two RTK modules, so you can have RTK uh, level positioning for the drone. If the drone's flying on GPS alone, it can be accurate within a meter or two. Uh, but if you have the DRTK2 base station set up, then you can get uh, accurate down to a couple centimeters. Okay. So if you're trying to fly right on top of a fence or right on top of a row of grapes, you can put the drone right on top of that. Yeah. And it's got two pucks, so obviously you're not going to have power lines and things interfering. Uh, no, which is I really have not. So. Yeah, I haven't seen any issues with uh, interference yeah. with the RTK or the controller. Um, cool. Anything yeah. else? Um, uh, anyone... I guess I should say the drone is very, very easy to repair. Um, all of it's modular, so if you know it does come down, usually the props are the first to go. Uh, if you do break a motor, you can just detach this here, um, replace it pretty easily. All of the connections are uh, electrical compression connections. Okay. So if you need to replace a part, you pretty much just unplug it, install the part again, plug it back into the motherboard or to the power board, um, and then reassemble it and then do some tests yeah. and it's pretty much good to go again. Um, they're very easy to repair uh, and that's what we think a lot of people or farmers or contractors will just be repairing them in the field themselves. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can help provide parts and the knowledge to do it, but it's, uh, it's not a complicated piece of equipment to work yeah. on. That's it's a exciting. good design by DJI to make it simple. Yeah, and like you yeah. said, you got the spare parts, so I think that's the important part, right? Yeah. You know, if you do have a problem, 
Um, awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time, Jim. Yeah, um, yeah. And as uh, if you need any kind of advice or want to have a chat, the best thing to do is reach out to enterprise at d1store.com.au. And I'm sure um, Jim and team will help out uh, to get you started. Happy to. Thanks, yeah. man. Thank Appreciate you. It. Yeah.